Hello YouTube and welcome back to another KSP episode and in previous episode we have successfully done the moon surveyor and today we'll be doing a little bit something else but we first want to use all the sweet sweet science that we have gathered. So electrics, yes, advanced electrics, yes I will need that, I will need foldable solar panels, batteries and whatnot. However let's just check quickly something else, miniaturization not so much space exploration advanced flight control useful landing probably what else heat shields yeah aerodynamics plane parts um soon enough but not yet advanced construction fairings yes no scones and these guys i will need advanced construction definitely and uh, propulsion systems what do we have with that one maybe not heavy rocketry these are the engines all right so where do i want to spend my hard-earned science advanced construction fairings and whatnot sure that's one and then I would say advanced electrics but um, let me just double check everything I do want my foldable solar panels I mean that much is pretty much given yeah I think I'm gonna go with advanced electrics all right sold committed press it yes see that wasn't too difficult now on to the fun part uh, the mission for today will be is uh, I'm planning on building a comsat deployer so uh, a craft that will be deploying a communication satellites and to be able to do something like that I will need some thinking from the get-go no no we will not load any of the existing craft we will make a new one so, and I've built this one in my previous, ep you know, saves, so this one will be not much different than the others, but let's do it. Here, landing stuff, then we want to put the decoupler, inverse, like that. Not the separator, decoupler, yes, thank you. I don't want too much debris stack tricoupler yes something like that and then i want to put again decouplers on top and the purpose of this craft would be to deploy three communication satellites in low carbon orbit well not too low but low enough so here we go some tanks then we need the tank adapter yes no maybe no is there no one else yeah that looks amazing no forget about it okay never mind let's then do structural tube what the hell is that service module haha -ha, now this looks perfect I actually just might use them So if I remove the shroud, I could be placing some batteries, the small ones, of course. And for the communication satellite, it might be important to have some batteries because, yeah, it will need to be storing the energy. I mean, of course, it will have to have solar panels, of course, but uh, during the shade time of the planet, we want to have it. Yeah. So shroud. OK, everything is unshrouded now and the batteries are inside. Then we want something like Probodobodine Octo. Do I want Stapotnik or Octo? I think I'm gonna go with Octo. One time solar panels. By the way, guys, the difference between these guys and the other ones is because these ones are not refoldable. I'm actually thinking I'm gonna take the one that are in a row. Yep, 
there we go, and one more. That should be enough. Then uh, communications, yes. Another set of communication antenna. That's too big. Let's place these and how would I, do I want to place them like that? Sticking up in the air? I don't care. Works for me. Good enough. All right. Utility, com, satellite, deployer, mark one. And as always, guys, I will be sharing this in my, you know, Steam Workshop. So look for the link uh, somewhere in the description of the video or on my workshop. All right, and uh, let's just action group everything. Thank you. All right. Doesn't look too bad now, does it? Now with that guy, we need some sort of service bay for you because you will need your own stuff and I'm guessing some battery. We don't need much. I mean, it's not going to be there for long, so I think I mean, even four batteries is probably an overkill. Alright, then I want to be putting a heat shield. Then I want to be placing two solar panels. We don't need much more. A tank. Decoupler underneath, yes, sure. Then I want to be placing a tank and a terrier engine. Now I don't need this guy to have too high of a delta V because it doesn't really matter anyway. I just want to make sure that I have my staging correct. 113 meters per second, that's good enough in my book. Maybe 0 0.19. In vacuum, that would be 458 meters per second. That's more than enough. Then I want to be placing another decoupler and then I'm gonna be putting the main deal. So I want to use the fairing this time because yeah. What I'm going to be launching is pretty beefy and uh, I want it to be properly enclosed. There we go. Looks about right. Perfect. All right, now we have to design. This is the payload. Now want to, we want to be designing the body of the rocket itself. So fuel tanks. And the Rockomax is too big. I think the 1.8 meter is just about the right size, so yeah, this would be funny. 107. Hmm. I might even consider that one. Put something like this with the decoupler. Oh, that just looks huge. Hideous. Yeah, something like this. Look at that. There we go. That's just darn amazing. Okay, think, Grumforks, think. We're going for total realism here, boys. And girls. So, nope, nope. Yes, now look at that. While I'm here, I might even move this. This is decent thrust to weight as it is without the engine. 
Then we place like this big fella. Just fixing my staging a little bit in the process. Some struts might not be amiss, so let's just strut everything so it doesn't wobble like a banana or spaghetti. Another rock connected tank. White tanks, and then finally, these big ones will help, I think. We put swivel at the bottom and these outside. How does that look for delta V? Or thrust to weight seems decent. That's good. Oopsie. Not what I intended. Not at all. I want the decoupler first. I was even thinking of putting, you know, like <laughs> something like this variant, but this wasn't all too great. Nah. Okay. It was a it was a worthy idea to pursue. I have to figure out a better engine placement. Well, something like that, and then Reliance out. Yes, they burn together. I also have to fix the decouplers for sure. One point eleven, that's a little bit low ish. So let's first do it like this. Hold on. If I power you from this direction, will that do it? With some rocket fins, stabilizers, whatnot. Would that do it? And then on top of these, put some hammers for good measure. Yes. Now we're going full Kerbal. Now this really looks Kerbal. All right. <laughs> so that don't worry. This craft is also going to be shared on the Steam Workshop, as I said. Now I just have to fi figure a way how to hold this correctly, and let's check our staging. I think it's time to launch. Let's launch it. All right, Jeb, are you ready? Three, two, one, and hit it! And look at it go. Seems to be working quite well. SRBs are definitely helping with initial boost. And detach. Rocket running hot straight and normal, perfect. And the whole purpose of this rocket is just to get us high enough uh, because then we'll be just discarding it completely and then we have a payload and everything and that has their own motor so I'm not overly concerned about that. And as you can see I'm going for a little bit more steep angle just so that I don't break something in the process. There we go. 
She flies perfectly, I mean... The only problem is that now we are a little bit too steep. So time to maybe angle her a little bit. Alright, steeper than I would like, but um, I think it will be doable. Drag it out. Yeah, it will take a little bit more delta V to circularize. 19 or 17, 1800. Alright, time to angle the rocket prograde. Getting rid of the fairing. Pointing prograde, burn time 57 seconds, so I will kick the boost around 29 minutes, or a little bit earlier, just to be on the safe side. Look at that screenshot, awesome. Twelve hundred meters per second to burn. Four, three, two, one, and hit it. And there we go. Perfect. That's what I call a good enough circularization. Let's extend some solar panels. There we go. Time to now start looking into how to deploy the satellites. Jeb, are you ready, buddy? Screenshot. I'm always taking a lot more screenshot than I need by because I don't know which one would be um, the screenshot of choice. All right, so the time has come to start burning and I would like to place them around 800 kilometer orbit ish, 800, 850 or something. So let's just make a maneuver node. and bring the apoapsis up to say around 800-ish. And you can obviously fine tune it. Scale it much less and then we can fine tune it easier. There we go. Small nudges to ensure that the apoapsis is around 800 kilometers. Perfect. And our node is in 30 minutes with a burn time of 8 seconds. And now I can just manually tweak the values just to see if I manage to get a more accurate apoapsis. Yeah, 800-024, perfect. Alright, let's continue and... One revolution around and... Then we are ready for our burn. Eight seconds, not a big burn. There we go. Let's line up. All right, T minus twenty five. And let's kick it. And we're there. 2.5 meters per second. Perfect. So that brings us to a nice 800 kilometer orbit. 
at which point we will be deploying the satellites. So we will first extend the antenna on you and then we can extract the solar panel, one of them, just to make you ready. And then we want to be coming somewhere around here. So let's warp here. Perfect. Time warp complete. And uh, now I want to be decoupling you. There we go. Thank you so much. Let's change the craft. Active vessel. There we go. Let's deploy the rest of the antennas and the solar panels. I can even dump the fairing for what it's worth. Now let's do a maneuver node that would bring us to 800 by 800. And that would give our orbital period 1 hour 33 minutes-ish, around. So if I fiddle with the node, then it will be 1 hour 32 minutes... 39 seconds. Alright, let's just point maneuver node prograde and get ready for the burn, obviously. Kick it. There we go, thrust limiter just to finally, finally adjust, raise the periapsis as much as we can to 800 by 800, oops, and then I press the wrong button, you dumb, you dummy, you, oh. I actually wanted to press the screenshot and then I press control by X or shift by accident. Eight hundred twelve by eighty. Well, a little bit more. As much as we can correct it. Eight hundred and seven. A little bit more, just to yeah. I'm just now looking at the apops and then the periapsis just to make sure that they are as close to the eight hundred as we will get. One hour, 32 minutes, 20 seconds. I guess that's good enough for me. So let's thrust it and shut down the engine. So this uh, probe will be around 800 by 800 and it will have one hour, 32 minutes and 20 seconds. That's important to remember the period in the orbit marker. Let's rename the vessel. It will be SAT, Kerbin, short range ComSat. One, accept. Looks good enough to me. Next one. Now guys, uh, since I will have already shown you how I deployed the one, I'm gonna do this in sort of a time-lapse or wildly accelerated. So it will be very, very much accelerated because I don't think it's makes sense for me to repeat everything twice, so. You know, extending, solar panels, decoupling, switching to craft and making sure that we extend everything and circularize in the right orbit. And uh, the most important thing that we'll be looking this time is the orbital period rather than apoapsis and periapsis because the, ta the target orbital period is 1 hour 32 minutes and 10 se or 20 seconds. So, getting ready and... Then we will be hitting the gas on the second one. A little bit less thrust so that we can, you know, be more precise. There we go. And then even smaller thrust that we can fine adjust it. 
130 to 18 and 20 perfect shut down engine turn it around and rename it sat carbon sr com sat 2 and then we have one more to go extend extend everything perfect you do another lap all right and then you will be decoupling yourself perfect all right once again rinse repeat same thing same orbit orbital period thrust limiter of 50 and 13 minutes 13 seconds burn time warp until we get there and then just burn it okay oops almost and hit it a little closer and five six seven and one hour 32 minutes 20 seconds perfect shutting down the engine renaming the satellite and all the satellites are deployed that leaves us with the final thing is satellite deployer buddy it's time that you go back home so burn until you get the periapsis down to 25 ish mark and then warp until we get towards the atmosphere we might want to be closing these lights off perfect do some science if we can i don't know eva report perfect board do the flippity flip and then get close that we get into the oh and we are already in the atmosphere perfect then let's burn until we decouple this guy move move bye bye hitting the brake and hitting another brake we have a total of 1200 meters per second of brake so we might as well want to be retracting the solar panels oopsie i forgot to do that hitting the brake kind of hard our um, specific impulse is dropping rapidly because as we are descending through the atmosphere get got rid of that one and we are slowly but surely coming down and as you can see we have established our communication satellite network so you know guys what to do to do once we hit the ground we there won't be much science so i'm gonna you know ask you to also let me know how do you deploy you know your communication satellites i tended to do it by matching first time orbit second time periods and then see how it works jebediah is coming back from his hero mission which will bring the betterment of for all Kerbal kind. Let's see if we can do some more science crew report, surface sample, and then, yeah, let's recover the vessel. So as always, 22 science, not bad. Guys, you know what to do. Like if you like the episode, hit subscribe, and I will be seeing you all in the next one. Until then, thank you very much for watching. This is Gromforks, signing off.